This video was made in collaboration with the National Center for Science Education. Oh, Mr. Plow, that's my name, that name again is Mr. Plow. Mr. Plow from The Simpsons' fourth season is easily one of the best episodes of the long-running sitcom. For the uninitiated, this 1992 episode involves Homer starting a successful snowplow business that is ultimately spoiled. First by friendly rivalry, then by an unseasonably warm winter day. It also includes one of the earliest mentions of the greenhouse gas effect in scripted media. Could this record-breaking heat wave be the result of the dreaded greenhouse effect? And is one of the first, but hardly the last, to undercut the seriousness of the phenomenon. Well, if 70 degree days in the middle of winter are the price of car pollution, you'll forgive me if I keep my old Pontiac. It might not seem like much, but if you're watching this video, then you must care at least a little about climate change. It probably puts you among the 59% of people in the US who see climate change as a major threat. And the time for collective climate action is upon us, which means we must try to reach the 41% of people who don't seek out information about climate change. And those people watch TV. On any given day, 80% of Americans will watch or stream TV. From product placements to quote-unquote very special episodes, scripted media can be powerful in raising awareness and changing minds. When it comes to general environmental issues, television, particularly children's media, has devoted countless hours to covering pollution, endangered species, and the importance of recycling. Most everything we buy will someday be thrown away. So try to buy things that can be reused or recycled. Collectively, these efforts have contributed to highly successful community-based environmental programs all across the country. However, of all the environmental issues covered, climate change has gotten comparatively tiny amounts of screen time. And when it is discussed, we found that it is usually framed in a way that casts doubt on its existence, treats activists as scam artists, and discourages action. For this video, graduate students studying science communication through the National Center for Science Education went through the past 30 years of television comedy to find and analyze how climate change is framed. You can find out more about our methods in the description below. However, we've still probably missed some examples, so feel free to leave a comment and help us expand our list. Comedy has to take a point of view. And understanding what a writer thinks is funny about climate change can be suggestive of how they and the audience they're writing for think about the issue. Can you believe it's November? No. This is global warming. It rocks. This particular approach relies on the humor of violating the norm of global warming is bad by highlighting a positive side, which almost always has something to do with warmer weather. Of course, this approach only works when the vast majority of viewers see this violation as, well, benign. In the 90s, when this framing was popular, climate change seemed distant enough to make this appear harmless. That's why comedies from The Simpsons to Frasier Thank you, global warming! <laughs> use this framing often with the same setup and punchline over and over. What is going on? It's supposed to be spring! Where is global warming when you need it? As we became more aware of the true impact of climate change, this framing gradually became less popular, dying out altogether in the 2010s. While television comedies have become much less glib about climate change, writers still struggled to frame climate change in a way that made people want to learn more. Moving into the 2000s, a lot of humor centered on the perceived obnoxiousness of characters that cared about the environment. The humor here came from the outlandish and extreme environmental views expressed by these characters, from not owning a car, to making their own clothes, to the perennial favorite, drinking their own urine. 30 Rock, My Name is Earl, and Modern Family all had episodes where the main cast was subjected to the mental and physical torture at the hands of these annoying characters. While you're out there destroying the earth, I'll be saving it. While the exact scenarios differ, these occurrences have three broad similarities. First, the environmentalist character is an outsider in the main cast, and often low status, suggesting that their perspective is less valid than the main characters. Yeah, I drive a Prius, so... And that's a nice little gesture. My car runs on reclaimed cooking oil. 
I have some literature if you want it. Second, the character receives a comeuppance by the end of the episode that suggests that they are either lying about their environmental passion or equally as imperfect as the main character. You're right, it is hard, but you know, it's also alienating. You know, no, no one wants to be friends with me. I I can't tell you the last time I had people over for dinner. Finally, the take-home message for the audience is often, we know that you, like the main character, are doing your best and that's fine. While viewers may find this positive message reassuring, it ultimately frames taking even minimal action as extreme and negative. Viewing episode after episode with this character archetype can lead to skepticism about motives and general disinterest about learning more. Though thankfully this type of humor has become rarer, one only needs to watch an episode of The Politician on Netflix to see the obnoxious environmentalist on screen today. Fueling this framing even further was Climate Change's big on-screen debut in 2004's An Inconvenient Truth. While the film had an important impact in inspiring climate action, it also provoked a counter-narrative that took the obnoxious environmentalist character one step further into climate alarmism, often casting doubt on the veracity of climate science. Though several comedies incorporated characters skeptical of climate change, there is no television show more prolific in promoting climate denial than South Park. If global warming were real, which all proven scientific data shows it isn't, the 2006 episode Man Bear Pig parodied what the creators saw as alarmism on the part of Al Gore, as he scared the town into believing in the fictional titular character. Boys, there's no such thing as a man bear pig. At the end, when Gore is congratulated for saving the day, the text of the episode suggests that the monster, a stand-in for climate change, never existed. Other episodes including Goobax and Two Days Before the Day After Tomorrow Global Warming! showed high-status characters expressing denialist views on climate change that were framed as correct. Global warming isn't happening right now. It's, it's not what caused the Beaverton flood. Although the creators of South Park, once climate skeptics themselves, have since come around to accepting the scientific evidence for climate change, reruns of these episodes are still airing on multiple networks worldwide, exposing millions of people to very dangerous rhetoric. As a mea culpa, in 2019, South Park released Time to Get Serial, where Man Bear Pig is shown to be real and Al Gore becomes a hero. Please, Mr. Gore, we need your help. Man Bear Pig isn't going to stop. Oh, is it inconvenient now? While this episode is certainly an improvement on outright climate denial, it chooses to make climate change funny in a way that's been popular since 2016. Nihilism. These days, just buying a tomato means that you are unwittingly supporting toxic pesticides, exploiting labor, contributing to global warming. From It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia to The Good Place to SNL sketches, modern humor about climate change wants us to laugh at how little anyone can accomplish, even given the magnitude of the environmental problem at hand. The framing in this type of humor leaves little doubt that climate change is real and an imminent threat. But once again, it encourages inaction. Why would anyone want to take action if it is ultimately doomed to fail? Press button to see what global warming will do in the next three years. Three years is a long ways away. Is this the goal of television writers? If they do indeed want to move people to action, then they should instead take note of best practices from science communication. Climate change should be presented as something solvable. Comedy, more than any other genre, has an untapped potential to move people to engage with topics and ultimately take action. Both by increasing the number of scripted media programs that tackle climate issues and by framing them in a way that encourages action, writers can reach the sizable group of Americans who are currently disengaged. Moreover, just as the science confirming climate change is settled, there's a vast literature of science communication studies on the best way to talk about climate change. Here are the top six techniques we know work. Make it local, connect to someone's values, show the messenger as high status, normalize taking action, focus on what we can gain by taking action, not what we will lose through inaction, and show success. 
While it isn't realistic to have a character in a sitcom single-handedly solve climate change, focusing on a local climate issue of personal relevance to the main character and having that character find some success making a change is a great way to encourage television viewers to take action. Moreover, it can still be funny. Rather than casting doubt on climate change, however, the humor can stem from disagreements about climate priorities or the struggles of getting broader support for climate change. A great episode of Better Off Ted manages to center the successful implementation of a rooftop garden by two main characters while still being a hilarious half hour of television. By following this model, writers can produce comedy that not only has social impact, but hopefully won't age as badly as the global warming is good comedy of the 90s. Finally, let's look at one of the most alarming trends. Between 2010 and 2015, there was almost no discussion of climate change in television comedies, which is less than any other five-year time period since 1990. While it is hard to say what's behind this lack of discussion, the sudden uptick of climate change plotlines in 2016 suggests that it might have something to do with who is in the White House. While Joe Biden's climate policy is promising, it can't operate in a vacuum. Therefore, it is more important than ever to be vigilant on climate change coverage in the media. We should, at minimum, expect television shows that we consume to engage with climate issues in a way that is led by evidence-based science and, without alarming the public, underline the need for action. Even a serious issue like climate change can be funny, as long as we are all laughing towards a solution. Hey everyone, Charlie here. If you've been watching Our Changing Climate for a while or just stumbled across this video and are wondering how you can help me make more videos, then consider supporting the show on Patreon. As an OCC patron, you'll gain early access to videos, special behind the scenes updates, as well as a members only group chat. In addition, each month my supporters vote on an environmental group that I then donate a portion of my monthly revenue to. So if you want to support the channel or are feeling generous, head over to patreon.com slash ourchangingclimate and become an OCC patron. Before I go, I just want to say a big thanks to Kate Carter and the National Center for Science Education Graduate Student Outreach Fellows for researching and developing the script for this video. They did an amazing job, and if you want to help them build a database of climate change references in the media, definitely check out the link below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in two weeks.